Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Battery Basics of Vapors, episode four. Today we're going to talk about rewrap batteries, what they are, what they mean for our community, what to look out for, and can we trust them? And probably the first question is, basically, what is a rewrap battery? That used to be a very simple question to ask. It used to just be something from one of the big five manufacturers, uh, Samsung, Sony, Panasonic, Sanyo, or LG. Now, to make things a little more confusing, Murata bought out Sony's battery operations, at least the ones we use for like round batteries like this Sony. So you'll see older batteries with Sony on the wrap, newer ones will say Murata. Panasonic bought Sanyo's battery operations several years ago, but you'll see both brands, Panasonic branded batteries and Sanyo branded batteries. Now rewraps were when they would remove this wrap, let's say the Sony wrap, and put their own wrap on. A rewrap com rewrapping company would do that. Something like uh, Vapcell that would take one of these five manufacturers and put their own branded wrap on it and then resell them. Unfortunately, it's a lot more complicated now. We still have the big five company rewraps, but we've also got other OEMs, or equ original equipment manufacturers like Samsung, Sony, Murata, etc. And some of those include companies like, should put this right side up, Molycell, which has some fantastic batteries. And then uh, also Lyshen, or Li Shen, which has uh, a pretty good battery, but um, has a bottom vent that can be problematic for Mac users. So there are other companies also around the world, and they can wrap those. And also the smaller China manufacturers, uh, something like um, the Suspire battery. They use batteries from Yangali New Energy Company that they have a, a financial arrangement with, partnership with. You're going to see more and more of these. They're not one of the major OEMs or the mid-level OEMs like Molycell or Li Shen, but they're very popular now because the cells cost less and the availability is a lot better. Uh, instead of hunting down um, lots of, you know, 1,000 Samsungs, 5,000 Panasonics or something like that are all around the world, different grades, different storage conditions. They can just go to one factory and say, we need so many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands a year and ship them to here and we'll rewrap them or the factory might even rewrap them or wrap them and bam, they're off and running. So more consistent supply, lower cost for the rewrappers. They're becoming more and more popular. Now, a question you could ask is, are these China manufactured cells like what Aspire uses, rewraps. They might have never been wrapped in the first place. They might be bare. Or are we only calling cells that from the original big five manufacturers that get rewrapped, rewraps? What do we call them then? Uh, something else? Do we call them rewraps? Do we call them just China manufactured cells? It's a lot of syllables. It starts to get kind of confusing. Now, rewrappers as a company we can't always just label these companies rewrappers because they might sell all different variations of these. What if they only sell a China manufactured cell? Well, does that make them a rewrapper if all they get are bare cells and they never actually rewrap or peel off an old wrap and put on a new one? Again, a little more of the confusion there. In my opinion, a rewrapper is a company that takes cells from any of the big five, Samsung, Murata, Panasonic, Sanyo, LG, or from the other OEMs like Mali, Li Shen, or ATL and others, whether in China or somewhere else, they take off those wraps, they put on new branded wraps like Vapcell and so many other companies, and then they sell them. For me, that's a rewrapper. Those are rewraps. If it's a China manufactured cell, and they put a wrap on it, for me, that remains a China manufactured cell. Now, there is an argument that these can be called rewraps, but for me, in order to differentiate, differentiate between them, five syllables, that's why I got it wrong, then I, I want to be able to say, hey, China manufactured or rewrapped. It's just a way for me to make things easier in descriptions of what's going on. Now, I want to address a myth about rewraps. You might have read or, or seen online, social media, all rewraps are rejects. That's not true. There may be a problem with rewraps. And even if every rewrap was, let's say, a grade B cell, and cells can be in different grades, grade A is reserved, the most expensive, um, the highest performing. If Sony makes cells, they can grade them A, B, C, they're even subgrades 
uh, like LG, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, etc. Now the difference between A and B can be very small. We may not even notice it. The A grade cells, if production, if it's a popular cell, those are going to go to the power tool manufacturers, the, the big industrial and commercial customers, electric vacuum cleaner manufacturers, etc. The grade B cells will be sold off all over the place. And odds are most of the cells we're grading are grade B. Now that doesn't mean they're rechecks. You might have a, a 3000 ma, uh, a certain cell, a Sony VTC6, that would be you know 3000 ma, probably tests around 3100 milliampere hours or ma. The grade B version of that would test it, you know, 3000 ma or 3050 ma. That's it. That's the difference. You could say, oh yeah, it didn't pass grade A standards, but that doesn't make it uh, an inherently dangerous or, or faulty reject. That just makes it a slightly lower performer. Now, if you're getting down into the disastrous grades, unsellable grades, or really low performance grades, ones that are packed up and shipped off to China or another country for recycling, and those shipments are intercepted and the battery sold instead of being recycled, that is a dangerous rewrap. And that's where a reject nomenclature or title can be applied to it and, and be true. Another reason why we can't say they're all rejects is they're using the same OEM cells that you buy separately. The distributors, the resellers, the importers who get you know, a bunch of Sonys in will uh, a rewrap will go to them and say, all right, you know, give us 100,000 Sonys. We're going to rewrap 50,000 of them and we'll sell 50,000 in the Sony wraps. So saying all rewraps are rejects means you're also saying that the non-rewrap cells, the ones still in the original OEM wraps like this Sony, oops, where did I throw it? Oh, I threw it down in here someplace. You're also saying that a cell like the Sony is a reject. So that's something to think about also in terms of uh, just labeling things like that. Now, this could be a disaster low-grade cell. I don't know. I've never had to deal with low-grade cells until I became a vapor. So I'm also learning too, but the more I learn, the more I'll be able to tell you. Now, many rewraps test the same as the OEM cells you buy. Why? Because they sell this batch of Sony's that they bought, maybe grade B, as rewraps and as not. So it's another reason why we can't say all rewraps are uh, rejects. <sighs> Problem is, if they take these diverted shipments for recycling, now we have a safety issue. Straight out safety issue, because they're grade who knows what, or just actually, they're actually factory rejects. But also, some of the rewraps, if they're from the small China manufacturers, we don't know what safety record they have. Not only is it important to have a, a high enough current rating for the way you vape in the battery to prevent overheating and, and other accelerated aging, things like that, but also there's something called an internal defect. And you may have seen those with some of the flat pouch LiPo batteries that would catch fires in laptops or on airplanes, uh, the Dreamliner or something, uh, battery pack in the wing. Those internal defects being manufactured in a clean room environment, a controlled environment at least, low humidity, low stuff flowing through the air is critical. The China, a lot of the China manufacturers, the small ones, don't do that. So what is their defect rate? Are they taking all the steps necessary to prevent these cells from eventually short-circuiting internally and going into thermal runaway where you fire, flame, smoke, and all kinds of other stuff, and maybe, maybe, the cell bursting. It all it depends on the cell, the, what's going on uh, in particular conditions, etc. But I'm sure a lot of you have seen the videos where a particular mod goes boom, and closest thing to what we call an explosion because of one of these batteries. A lot of times that's just because they've been short circuited, which will doom any battery. But there's just too many unknowns regarding the China manufactured cells and their internal defect rate. I haven't been able to find any data about that or have anyone give me data for that. So what are some solutions to this? We're, we're stuck here. The OEM batteries we get are, are lower grade. I doubt they're grade A. They might be here and there. Grade A, but a lot of times will be grade B. Again, that's not an inherent problem. Lower grade. Then we've got the unknowns and the China manufactured cells. What options do we have? Well, one of them is to buy authorized cells. There's one company, 
1 OEM out there. I'm hoping there's more. I'm so hoping there's more. But right now, Molly, E1 Molly Energy Company or Corporation, who makes the brand as Molly Cell, has some the best performing cells available to us. And they're also willing to sell to vapors, openly supporting the vaping market. That is the solution. By buying from an authorized distributor like uh, Lithium Ion Wholesale in the United States, um, I think it's Fog Star and a couple others in the UK, I don't remember, or buying from good distributors like Enersig in Germany. From them, you can get at least known grades, especially if you're buying Molly cells. Uh, they're supposed to be grade A cells, they're being shipped directly to these authorized vendors and distributors. Bam, there's a solution. But now you're limited to these three different Molly cells I think are available to us, and you may want something else, uh, one of the other options. Or Molly cells may not be available to you in the country you're in, or cost way too much money to import. Well, <laughs> an intriguing option is the China OEMs, um, Lishan, ATL, BAK, and others. Uh, if they're willing to sell to us, right now that's unknown, I don't know the defect rates, but there are mid-level millions of dollars in sales. I would trust them more than I would trust a small factory that operates for a couple weeks a year with windows wide open in the uh, environment, doing so much by hand, if they've got automated assembly, etc. The more I learn about that, the more I'll pass on to you, that might be an option. A very intriguing possibility is the smaller factories that I was just talking about. If these factories are willing to have more consistent performance from the cells, namely start automating what they're doing, and if they start testing much more thoroughly uh, to underwriters laboratories or UL testing standards or some of the international safety standard uh, testing, not just the basic testing they need to ship their cells, and to show a commitment to the vaping community and openly embrace and support selling to the vaping community and saying, hey, here's safe, here's our internal defect rate. If they're willing to do that at some time in the future, that's an option. Right now, it's not. The only concrete one I have to say, hey, got a lot less worry, is buy Molly cells from one of the authorized distributors or vendors. I know, it sucks, but this is the situation we're in. And this is actually the third time I'm recording this video because it's been so hard to find a way to relay this information without sounding like a total disaster scenario. It's not, it's the same one we've been in for years. But here's what's going on behind the scenes and, and maybe some possible ways by educating the community, by us being more aware of the situation, by demanding from the rewrappers, higher grade cells, more transparency on what cells are using, using their sources and et cetera, we can slowly start making things better for, for all vapors. So right now, we're forced to trust the rewrappers. That's it. That is our situation. Again, if we're not going to an authorized vendor from Molly Cell and hopefully other cells, certainly uh, good vendors like Lithium Ion Wholesale and Fogstar and 18650 Battery Store, NKON.NL and, and several others. There's a, um, a list in the description section for this video. Um, going to them is gonna be a better step than going to who knows who and who knows where they got their cells from. That's another intermediate step, but certainly going to an authorized vendor for an OEM who's willing to sell to us like Molly Cell will probably be the best step we can take now. Um, we're forced to trust three rappers. There are many of them out there trying to do the best job they can with what they have, um, but there are some bad ones who are like rating 18650s at 60 amps, 80 amps, AWT, and dozens of others, unfortunately, who have unknown grade cells with spectacularly exaggerated ratings. That is a problem, and I call that a hazard. And that's the ones that I'm trying to find and let you know about. It's gonna take a while to, to flesh them out, to let you know who they are, but they're out there. And unfortunately, it makes things all the more difficult for us, particularly in some countries where those are the only cells available. Regulations can possibly help, um, but they can hurt us too. The government can step in and say, hey, you know, uh, you have to have this kind of testing or that kind of testing. Underwriters Laboratories, UL, has uh, 8139, UL 8139 safety standard. That's for hardware. But buried in that standard is you have to test the cell that's used inside the mod 
to a particular standard that's a pretty good safety standard. Now, if the government comes in and says, hey, well, they all have to be tested to that, that will help us, but it's a while away. And there's a problem. What if the government says, that's all too complicated? We don't wanna deal with that. It doesn't address ratings at all, just the safety of the cell itself. The government might just say, you know what, just internal battery mods, which means now mechs and user replaceable battery mods are illegal to sell in the United States. So it's a real downside to government regulation too. It's not just this cure-all that we can count on. Now, what I'm talking about here in terms of rewrapped cells also applies to the OEM wrapped ones, ones in like the Sony wrap or a Samsung wrap. Those cells are just, are the ones that get rewrapped. So any regulations or anything like that will also apply to these OEM wrapped cells in addition to the rewrapped ones. Now, <laughs> I wrote this down because it's such an important note. I'm not trying to scare everyone here. This isn't some kind of fear-mongering video. This is the situation we're in. This is a situation we've always been in. I feel strongly that awareness of that, knowing where these cells come from, which ones are exaggerate, exaggerated ratings, the more we know, the more educated we are, the better the decisions that we can make about what we're gonna buy, or who we're gonna buy it from. And that's what the big thing about this video is, saying, look, here's, here's where we are. <sighs> buy from trusted vendors, buy authorized sources when possible. That's our best options right now. Avoid exaggerated ratings. If it sounds too good to be true, uh, it is. There is no 18650 with a rating over 30 amps. If it's higher than that, that doesn't exist. Any 18650 over 3000 ma cannot be rated over 10, uh, excuse me, 20 amps, and it could be 15 or it could be lower. A 3,500 mAh battery cannot be 35 amps. It's gotta be 10 amps, it could be three amps. Now with the 2700s and 21700s, nothing can be over 35 amps. It doesn't exist, it's not available to us. So just use those as rough gauges as to when you decide, whoa, okay, I'm gonna avoid this battery. I'd love to know, what a rewrap is for you, what the definition is up there, which ones are rewraps, which ones are not, and do you trust them? Have you had good experiences with them? Have you not? Um, uh, which vendors you, excuse me, not vendors, uh, which rewrappers you trust or don't tr trust? Comment down below. I'm interested in your feelings about this, about the state of the industry, our community, and what we have to deal with for rewraps and, and even OEM sales uh, from all these different sources. Let me know down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you for watching.